Let's start right there with a beat up Paul Pierce. He's coming in tired. He's I don't know if he's done a lot of media this morning, but he's an NBA champion. He's a Hall of Famer. He's had 19 seasons in the league, and now he's got a new show on DraftKings Network, All the Smoke Productions on YouTube, The Truth Lounge with Paul Pierce. But he runs hard. He lives hard. And so he seems tired this morning. Are you okay? And I'm good. I had a good workout, though. That's what it really was. I got up at 5 a.m., got to the gym. I've been disciplined for the last six months, man. So, ah, yeah, it was a rough one this morning. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling well, it. Well, but retirement's hard. making a comeback, though, you know? So, I'm just getting ready to disengage. <laughs> okay, because retirement is hard, correct? Like, leaving the game and being near the game and creating a career after you've played for 20 years in the game, that transition is a little bit rough, is it not? Yeah, man, it's definitely rough. Since 80% of us get divorced, you know, I've been one of those after retirement. You know, it's rough being a single guy, you know, retired. And, uh, you know, it's rough when you can wake up and do whatever you want, go anywhere you <laughs> want, uh, date whoever you want. That's rough. Okay, so you have been, uh, you've liberated. You're a, you're a Hall of Famer. Uh, everybody knows this about you. And now you've started a media career as well. Why are you laughing, I mean? I'm laughing because, man, Paul's my guy, man. And I, yeah, that's my man. What's up, my man? <laughs> What's up, Paul? Uh, man, <laughs> like, let me, I, I, I'm going to veer this into, a, like, a semi-serious part of the conversation, man. Paul, you didn't retire that long ago, right? You, mm-hmm. you are a very newly retired player in my eyes. And a lot of your peers are also newly retired. Yeah. Why is it that it a few short years, we've gotten so far away from when y'all played in the All-Star game and took it seriously, at least in the fourth quarter, to where we are now where nobody tries and they tell you, hey, I am not going to try. You know what, man? It happens. Every era is different when we got to understand because even my era was different from the era before. And so, you know, it's it, it just... And I think a lot of that responsibility has to do with the older guys as we start transitioning to a younger generation... We didn't do a good job with the younger generation, you know, and I think we maybe there was a disconnect or something because, you know, what I learned and what I brought to the NBA, I learned from the OGs from before. And so maybe the social media, maybe, uh, you know, just the, the, the popularity or the money or the business of the game has changed it. You know, it's a lot of things that can factor into it too, man. You know, so... I can't really put my finger on one thing, but you know, how are you gonna tell a dude who out here making 50 million or a guy who making 20 million off the bench? I mean, I mean, to go out here and play hard in the all-star game when it's supposed to be your time off. You know, it's just really, it's really in my eyes, it's a disgrace to the game of basketball that I grew up giving everything I had to it, you know, my competitive spirit to just go out there and watch this game look like this. But uh I don't know how we get back to where it used to be either. But disgrace, that's a strong word because it upsets you to see them not trying and you feel like an old head because you're coming after a 21-year-old because he wants to be on vacation in the middle of the season. Well, there's over 400 players. You know, only 24 of them got to go. So, you know, the rest of them get some rest. And, you know, people pay good money. And this is like, you got to understand, there's there's – Two parts to the NBA season that people always look forward to. It was the All-Star game. You look forward as a fan, and me being a fan now, I look forward to the All-Star game and the NBA finals, the playoffs. You know, the regular season, you dip in and out, watch here and there. But them is the two big moments as a fan to where people pay lots of money to fly in. People pay lots of money to to, to get tickets to be part of the weekend. And, and, and you just want a little bit more effort out of it. You know, it, it's... It's just you want a little more out of it. Paul, do you, as the one who was coming up and butting up against LeBron James, whose legacy you put up against Dwayne Wade's and say, I'm the same player, when (laughs) you watch LeBron James still doing it as the oldest player in the league, given however it is you feel physically right now, do you look at that and marvel at you can't believe he's still doing it at that age? I really can't, you know, uh, it's a joy to watch, man. And I think us as fans got to really cherish it for however many more years LeBron can play at this level. Because I'll tell you one thing, when I was like 34, I was waking up and it was hit or miss if I was going to be ready for the game. And then I'm looking at a dude who's 39. Uh, LeBron is probably the greatest athlete we've ever seen. Just just athlete. We've never seen nobody play at this level at this age. And uh, yeah, you can say 
Brady, you know, he played till he was 40 plus, but he didn't have to, to run up and down a court, jump. You still go out there and dunk, guard. You know, he had a, a good line to protect him. So at this, with the physicality and, and with the athleticism, athleticism he's displaying and still putting up these crazy numbers. And, and, and you say at 39, LeBron, uh, any team you put him on as a contender at the age of 39 is just crazy to hear and, and watch. Does it hurt you to have to say it out loud? Because I don't think you want to give these guys respect even now. <laughs> you know what, man? It ain't even that. I always spoke my truth toward LeBron. And, you know, a lot of people always hear the negative aspect of things when I say things of he ain't this or he ain't that. But people never hear when I say he is this or he is that. You know, when he won that championship for the Lakers, I, I put him up there with Jordan. You know, I even went as far as to say he may be the GOAT all time. And, you know, people don't like, people don't hear that. They hear the, the negative stuff I've said, but we were rivals to me. You know, he brought the best out of me and I feel like I brought the best out of him. But at the same time, I thank him that I had a chance to uh, match up with him. And now in retirement, you know, what more can I say? I got to give it up to him because I probably wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for him. Have you heard this sound from Udonis Haslam? Surely it's gotten back to you. It's from the OG's podcast. He is saying that still now, if he sees you guys, you and Kevin Garnett anywhere, he, he, well, let's play just play the sound. The sound. Play the sound My yeah, let's play. We used to hate the motherfuckers that we used to have to go against and the rivalries and all that. To this day, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how I feel when we got to play the Celtics. I can't stand the motherfuckers. First of all, and I have nothing against, and I have this. And the crazy thing about it, can I tell I, a story like about Tatum. it in the huddle? Man. I like Tatum, and I like Brown. I would love for you to tell us. Can I tell I a story about it in the huddle, man? Story. What? I, I like Tatum, I like Brown. Nah, Them not old this. Mother KG and Paul, I don't uh, with y'all. Y'all know there that. There it go. It's cool. There it go. <laughs> I don't with y'all. Y'all know that. Get started. I'm cool on that. <laughs> that the young generation, y'all can create y'all own beef, and y'all can create y'all own whatever. The more y'all already know. I see y'all in the grocery store. It's on. Yeah, all right, that shit was crazy. And the, I don't care what aisle it is. It could be a 7-Eleven around the motherfucking cheese dip. It's like whatever. All that getting flipped over. Man, listen. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Like, And they understand that. I told them that. Like, They know that. I don't with them people. They told you that? He told you that? All right, first of all, I'm trying to remember when he told me that because I never remember hearing that. Uh, Second of all, when we played Miami, when Udonis Haslam was out there, I don't remember no hard screens, no hard fouls, wow. no talking. And now that we're in retirement trying to get our podcast off, I'm starting to hear this hate, you know. But that's cool. You know, I know I rub people uh, uh, the wrong way. I never liked Miami. I respected them. But uh, it is what it is, you know. I'd rather do it in a, a telephone booth, but if you need more room in a grocery store, that's cool too. Uh oh. So, okay. So you know, it is that. You know, you know, I'm a grown man. I ain't dodging nothing, man. People are going to say what they want to say. So, you know, let it be what it is, you know? But I'm going to be ready for it. Okay. But let's talk about some of those great memories. I don't imagine you have a lot of moments that felt as good as hitting the three in LeBron's face in Miami in game five, when LeBron built the team to beat your team. Like you guys legitimately hated each other because you were playing for the top of the sport. Yeah, absolutely. But it was all about basketball. Dan, I'm going to tell you that because every year when we went to the all-star game, it was, you know, when we see him, it, you know, it was a little tension, but it was respect. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, Nobody wanted to fight or, or put hands, but we showed that grit that when we was on the court, that was our identity as a Celtics. You know, when we on the court, you know, I don't like you, you don't like me, so what? I ain't picking you up, you fall to the ground. I don't really want to shake your hand. And, and that's what the robbery really was, you, you know? And, and so it looked like that on the court, but to really hate somebody in real life, <clears throat> I hated them as a team. I hated that they formed their team just for us. You know what I'm saying? But that is a that era of basketball is gone just because we was passionate about winning. We was passionate about uh, playing against the best, and, and that's what I feel like is missing from the game right now. Like what rivalries is really out there? You know, what, what, you don't see people get into it. You don't really see people. It's just it's it's just another aspect of the game that drew interest toward it, and I, I don't really see that out there no more. You know, when everybody hanging out and shaking hands, and that's cool and all. It's a different era, but I like the rivals. And there's somewhat of a rival still with Miami and us, but it, it it really ain't the same. You know that. Paul, what's your favorite part of retirement? My favorite part of retirement, man, I'm I'm enjoying my kids. You know, uh, being a father to my kids, I'm enjoying traveling. 
Uh, I'm enjoying, you know, being in the media, doing things that I uh, didn't know I can do business-wise, you know, because I always played basketball my whole life. Uh, you know, podcast stuff, real estate. I'm in a, you know, different business ventures. And, uh, you know, I like the time we're, we're in. We get to tell our own story, control our own our own media. And I'm excited about my, my new podcast. I'm coming out with the Truth Lounge. We're launching this Friday. So join us. You know, it's going to be, we're going to address all these issues too. You know, all these issues people got with me. Uh, you know, the wheelchair game, uh, you know, whatever it is. We're going to address lifestyle basketball, but it's going to be all in good and fun, man. Well, uh, help me sell this part of it to the people because the, Dr the Truth Lounge with Paul Pierce, it debuts this Friday on the DraftKings Network, and, and we have, are in partnership, are in partnership now with all the Smoke Productions on an assortment of projects, and this is one of them, and I would imagine, you correct me if I'm wrong, your nickname mm -hmm. is The Truth, and uh, you're ending in mainstream media. You had a very good job. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, was pro it probably felt less honest to you, however that ended, and I'm wondering if there were lessons in it for you that now birthed this project in a way you could do it a little more you than the way you were doing work before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you're going to get the authentic Paul Pierce. Um, you know, I feel like my ending with <clears throat> ESPN, I, I, was, I, I think I ended like in... February, March, I think I was, that was going to be my last year anyway. I just feel like I couldn't really express myself like I want to. And with my show, I'm going to be my authentic self. You're going to get the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. And, uh, you know, I, I get to tell my story and get the stories from other different people. Um, I got truth serum coming, so... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's gonna be you got you got to tune in you got to tune in truth serum is that class a azul or what is it <laughs> it's the truth serum once you take a sip of the truth serum hey better pray uh so how does this work for you creatively though because i am i am curious whether this incarnation of your media career you see uh, the young people in these spaces everybody's got a podcast why why will yours be something that's different than everyone else's because, you know, I'm not one, then to just say things or do things for cl clicks. You know, I'm, I'm really authentic about mine. I get to tell my whole story. I, I get to talk with great people and, and uh, you know, just live my lifestyle to the fullest in retirement. You know, I don't think nobody's enjoying their retirement more than Paul Pierce, the truth. Uh, and, and so I, I just want to be able to just, you know, a lot of things I want to get off my chest and a lot of things I want to give to the people sports wise, pop culture wise, uh, just pure authenticity. And, uh, you know, it, it, and like my nickname say, it's going to be the truth and, and everybody's going to understand it, you know, and, and really hear from the horse's mouth. Dan, I'm going to say this about Paul, right? Paul, I said this, when you, when you said Dwayne Wade, you made your comparison to Dwayne Wade's career and everyone went crazy. I said, what Paul said is something that a lot of NBA players think. And I'm not even agreeing with you, to be honest. But, yeah. but I understood what you were saying was from the heart and the truth because I know there are a lot of players who think that but aren't brave enough to say it out loud. And so you asked about what we can expect from the Truth Lounge. I think you could expect Paul to speak his mind regardless of what kind of backlash he might get for it because he authentically feels that way. You, you know what? I, I, I'm not one to shy away from the booze uh, or, or the criticism. I think that my career and my life was built on that. You know, even when I, when I got drafted, I was projected number two. I got picked number 10. I, I get booed in different arenas. I got booed at the All-Star game in L.A. So, you know, the, the, the crowd noise don't affect me. You know, as a matter of fact, it just I thrive in chaos, I think. So. How did that? You know, how did that start? How like because it seems like so many players nowadays are very very sensitive to what people say about them on social media. What Skip Bayless said about them. What Stephen A. said about them. How did you develop like this thick skin of you don't care? I mean, I think growing up as a, as an athlete, as a basketball player, that I was trying to make it. I always read the criticism, and every time I read it, it made me better. <clears throat> you know, it made me work harder. It, it, it put it made me get an attitude, you know, like, all right, they think this about you, so I'm going to do this. So I think it carried over in life, you know, not only in sports, but in life. And it's like, hey, I'm going to brush this off and be better. You know, I use it to motivate me, you know. And so it's just gotten to the point to where, you know, I thrive in it. I welcome it. Uh, somebody's got to wear the black hat. I mean, you know, everybody can't 
ride off uh, in the, on the white horse. You know, somebody's <laughs> got to be the bad guy, and I don't mind that. Well, Paul, I hope I hope you're being prodded into places where you're telling some of the more honest stories because I want to know what's the best of the memories. For example, Kevin Garnett is a world class trash talker who has an assortment of clashes in his past. You're very close to him. Is yeah. there one above all others that is the story that gets told because it's the impressive one about Kevin Garnett had 20 years running where he talked more than anybody in the league? <laughs> you know what? There's certain things I will not ask Kevin. You know, there's certain trash talk moments that to this day I don't know and I will not ask him. And uh, that went kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Too personal. Too personal. <laughs> I promise you, I do not know the answer to like a couple of them that was rumored to be said in the trash talk. Uh, and I don't want to know. And so, but <laughs> there's a lot of stories that in the locker room and on the court that have been really good. And uh, I'm going to save it for the podcast. So, so make sure y'all tune yeah, in. Oh, he's that. embargoing it. Yeah. He is embargoing it. Okay. <laughs> it's everything right now, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all sneaky. Y'all think y'all slick. <laughs> Yeah, we'd, yeah, we'd like, we'd, yeah, we'd like to share. We'd like to share with yeah. your stories. We don't want you to have them for yourself. We're media <laughs> partners now, Paul. That's the way no. that works. You we'll share it over together. here. We share it over there. You scratch my back. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't talk about the poop wheelchair. You know, <laughs> no. Hey, when you put your hand. When y'all come in on Truth Lines, I got a book. It's called The Truth Chronicles. <laughs> and you got to put your hand on it and, and look. Okay. Okay. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing. All right. Well, the then tell me one of the most memorable Heat Celtics stories that people don't know. These are this was the rivalry of our time over a decade. You fighting? Ah. They they built their team to beat your team. I don't even know how you feel about Ray Allen right now today because he went over to their team. Like, what are what's the greatest truth that can be told here of something that hasn't been heard? All right. This is look. All right. Look. This is what I did here, and this is about Ray Allen. And I'm not even sure if this is true. In game, we played Miami game. I think it was either game two or game five in Miami. Before the series was over, I heard Ray Allen was already looking for houses in Miami. Oh, wow. I heard, I, I'm not sure how true that is. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, Ain't that crazy? During the series. When did you hear it, though? I heard it a little later, like maybe that summer. Okay. I heard that he was already looking for houses during the middle of the series while we're in Miami, while we're trying to beat them to go to the championship. I did hear that. That's I don't think nobody heard that. That's wild. I hadn't heard that one for sure. Well, I, I and I imagine somewhere in there because it, you know, explain to me what the rivalry wow. what the rivalry means from a personal place when as you describe that all these years later you tell that story because it feels like a betrayal to you. Yeah, it did. It did feel like a betrayal, man. You know, when you when you when you go to war with your brothers and, and you do family stuff with them and their kids and your wives get along and you in their house and then next thing you know. You go to the team that we're trying to beat and you don't even tell us or warn us or give us a phone call and you just jump shit without even like no goodbyes, no hugs or nothing. That did feel like a betrayal. You know what I'm saying? That's almost like your girl going to your best friend. And then, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that ain't that ain't cool. That wasn't cool. At least tell them, give me a proper break off. You, you know what I'm saying? So it, it did feel like a betrayal. And so that's why for a lot of years we didn't talk to Ray or we didn't address him and you know, it, it was just, it was tension. You know, it was tension every time we played them because I just felt like if you brothers, you're supposed to acknowledge one another where you like to or not and, and be like, look, I ain't feeling what happened with the team. I ain't feeling what's happening with management. They're not giving me my money. I'm not starting no more, whatever it is. You, you, the bond that we created in the locker room on and off the court, that's something you can talk to us about. Whatever you got with the management and, and, and and the ownership and Danny Ainge and Doc, that's between y'all. But with your brothers, we in the locker with it every day, we deserve better than that. And that's why it was a lot of tension. And me and Ray was able to clear that up like some years later. We, As a matter of fact, how we cleared it up, we had an exhibition game in China. And I learned that Ray was there. And I just said, you know what, let me go holler at him. And that's when we kind of cleared the air. And I told him my, my truth and how I felt about it. And then we've been cool since then.
It's interesting that you say that because uh, you don't strike me as the type that would get hurt very often by sports business being cold, right? Like I, my guess is that you got that's a veteran team there. They know how cold that business is. That to hear the hurt in your voice on that one is interesting when you're just talking about we cared about winning the championship and we went from somebody who played for us and was helping our businesses and our families and our economies and our place in Boston and now he's yeah. against us and we didn't even get to say goodbye the way we wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, come on. I mean, that 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 right there. Like I said, the stuff that we went through, you got to give me a goodbye. Give me a hug or a dap or something. You know, I know how cold the business is. Yeah, you can leave a free agent, but it's just certain respect levels that you have amongst, you know, players like me, Ray, and Kevin. You know, it's just certain respect levels to this. You know, I would have never been, I would have been like, look, y'all, hey, man, I, I'm not – Feeling it over here no more. They're not giving me the money I want. You know, I, I'm a, I'm about to go over here, which I think, you know, I'm going to talk to my family. It's a lot of things that's going to come in with it. And, and, and so, you know, I just think it's a respect level. now, And we've all felt disrespect. Dan, you know, on that note, I do have something I want to ask Paul that I've been thinking of for a long time. And I never, I never brought it up to him, but I have been hurt by it. Uh, you know, when I ran American Ninja Warrior the second time, Paul was there, right? Oh. <laughs> so we're, we're, oh. we all show up. We're watching the ninjas go through it. And Paul looks at me and he says, $500, you can't go through the first obstacle. I said, you're on. And then <laughs> Michelle said, I'll put in another. Michelle Beto said, I'll put another 500 on it. Then a couple more people went and failed. And Paul says, I'll give you $10,000 if you do this. And so at that point, I said, okay, let me go stretch. Because now it went from, oh, you know, a little bit of money to, man, I could, this could, this is life changing for me. I don't make money like that. So 10000 let's do this. <laughs> Paul, I, I got up on the stage and I looked at you. I didn't even look at the camera. I looked at you and I had up 10 fingers. Like, 10? You sure about this? And you said yes. And I ran through it. And I got so excited about the money because I was running great through it that I did not pay attention to the last step, and I fell in the water. You was almost there, dog. You was right there. I was actually pulling it for you. I was actually pulling for you. Boom, boom, flat, ah! That wasn't, that wasn't the one. That's that was the, the first, first one. one. That, that is the, the most viewed clip in American Ninja history. Oh, yeah. This is the, I didn't know there was a second there story was, to there this. There was a second one in L.A. This one was in Miami, the one in L.A. But you're saying you failed the second time? Why have I never seen the video of the second time? Paul that Pierce. That wasn't it. That wasn't the one. You no, know, that wasn't the one. The you one, choked is what you're saying. I, absolutely, because I was thinking about the money. Because I looked at Paul and I said, oh, it's about to happen now. I'm like going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And I missed the last step because I was thinking about what I'm going to do with the money, to be honest with you. I was like, should oh, I buy, nah, uh, put nah, a down nah. payment on a car? Da, da, da. And I just I saw the rope. I was like, I got to jump. And I ended up oh, skipping no. that last That's step. Hard. Now, Paul, at any point during my run, did you actually believe that I was going to do it? I, I, You know what? I saw the other contestants. And, you know, they were some pretty good athletes in there. I mean, and. You know, not to take anything away from your athleticism, but I'm looking at their build and your build, and they didn't do it. I was like, ah, uh, this is going to be tough. All right. Amin just wanted to, to tell glory day stories yeah, about man. himself there and ended the interview with total self-involvement. Uh, Paul, <laughs> the Truth Lounge, oh. uh, you will tell your gambling stories. You will tell your... Your, your deep, dirty NBA secrets, uh, and people will have to swear on the truth serum in the Bible that they're there to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, correct? True. All right. We can do that. Truth in the modern age of media. He's right here. Thank you, uh, Paul. It's good to be in business together. I'm looking forward to what uh, what comes from this. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, me. Thanks, Paul. You really had to tell that Ninja Warrior story it a second was, time. <laughs> you, really, you really had to do it a second time. Oh, Ten grand bad. there, Dan. I was better the second time. That's why. He was there. He can attest to it. <laughs> I was like, oh, there it is. We got okay, it. Okay, we got it now. We got it now. Let's see. Let's see the clip of Amin. They finally found it. Watch, watch, watch. Watch this. Here we go. Watch. I look at Paul. Hold on. Okay. I will come up. Paul. Look at him. What? Look. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, oh it but, got real. Those, yeah, are, no. those are nerves. On, they, Amin wasn't nervous before. Now it's real money. Now athlete yeah. Amin is making an appearance. I said some money on the oh, line. Hold on now. Watch. Here it is. You started counting. He's going. Oh, 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 and right here. Oh, 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 o
You can't tell, but in my mind, I didn't see that last step. I just saw the rope. I was like, jump. You just saw the money. I just saw the money. I literally saw a bag of money. <laughs> okay, Paul, I was about to swing through and then come down with the money dance like a uh, Manziel. Like, yeah, pay me right now. We go to the ATM right oh. now. Oh, so and then he uh, takes pictures with everybody. That was, that was the worst part. <laughs> I was in the water and Paul taking pictures. <laughs> oh, that was man. hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> you got me crying. Uh. <laughs>